What's Your Work Fit is sponsored by Hudson Davis. Start your brand's marketing and communications journey today at HudsonDavisCommunications.com. I'm Dan Smolin. I built a successful executive career in marketing and communications before becoming a top headhunter and founding my own executive search firm. Now get this. Every day, mainstream media runs stories in which old school bosses and thought leaders frame your work and workplace issues in ways that are often divisive and unmeaningful. And that's just crazy. The time has come for you to answer the question, what's your work fit? So that your work and career fit who you are, how you want to live, and what you want your lasting contributions to be. What's your work fit? It answers your questions and tackles the issues that keep you up at night about advancing your career in this time of workplace revolution. So let's get started. Hey, good day, everyone. Dan Smullen here from What's Your Work Fit. It's good to see you, and I hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a great show lined up. Uh, before I get to that, I want to address some um, <laughs> remote tech issues like we're talking about on, on today's episode. But they had to do with ones for What's Your Work Fit. And as many of you know, we simulcast. When we go live, we do so simultaneously to... LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, and our What's Your Work Fit channel on YouTube. And typically it works fine. Uh, yesterday when we were setting up the show for today, LinkedIn was having some hiccups and it was taking forever to fix. And I really didn't think we would be able to do our live show live on LinkedIn today. Um, so I sent some of you off to our YouTube channel if you're there today, I really appreciate it. If you're not and you're catching us on LinkedIn, that's all good too. Uh, we, we simulcast for a reason. We go after different audiences. LinkedIn, which is our primary, has to do with career people, business people, and that's where we find them. And we don't want them to log off of the platform if they don't have to. Other people, perhaps new to the workplace, are finding us on YouTube, and that's great too. We love YouTube. It's such a great and robust channel. And yet others find us on Facebook Live, which is also quite good. And so wherever you happen to find us live or on playback, we thank you. We truly appreciate your viewership and, of course, your listenership on our audio podcasts, which runs new episodes on Friday. So thank you so much. We got a big show to get to. I want to get right to it. And... um introduce you to our guest, Dave Kelly. Good day, Dave. How are you, sir? Dan, I'm doing great. The show must go on. I, I like the attitude. And yes, there's always there's always the possibility for technical issues. I think LinkedIn did something overnight. My app for LinkedIn is certainly looking a little bit different than it was just 48 hours ago. Well, there was a big hubbub and StreamYard, which is our front end for distributing the live show, was all over this. So thanks to Gage at StreamYard for putting pedal to the metal and getting this problem solved. We really do appreciate it. Okay, we're going to get to uh, the question that was asked actually by a lot of people, and including somebody I met on a metro train last week going to Washington, a guy named Lev, who is a... Ukrainian emigre. He's a tech guy and he's living in um, Northern Virginia and taking the train into Washington, D.C. every day. Um, his question is tangential, Dave. Um, he he uh, saw Apple's product release last week like a lot of people yeah. did. And, you know, he's, a, he's that kind of a tech guy. You know, he likes new toys. And, and so, you know, he's looking at the iWatch and the i iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro, and he's wondering, yeah, you know, everything I've got is working fine. Do I do I invest in new tech or do I keep my eyes open for other things? And so that was the question. In pre-interview with you, I discovered we have to pivot a little differently than Lev's question, which is what's the 
best remote tech for 2023. And I'm going to get to this logo array here, which is going to surprise a few people because you're going to be like, what? Those are logos. Those are companies. <laughs> Where are the toys? But tell us why the best remote tech for 2023 has to do with this graphic. So I'm a business communications guy, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for some of the hardware devices to really be effective, for them to work great, you need to have a great platform. Mm -hmm. You know, years a few years ago when the pandemic started and everyone was sent home, Zoom became a household name. Right. Video meetings. Everyone was jumping on video meetings. And it could be Zoom, Microsoft te Teams, Ring Central, you know, a lot of these other players, Sangoma, Intermedia, Vonage, et cetera. All of these organizations, they provide, pl they provide platforms that support voice, video, and so much more. Right. If you're a remote worker, these are, I mean, th these, these are helpful for folks that are remote and non-remote. But if you're looking for the best work fit, you need to have some sort of a unified communications platform that's going to help you stay in touch with your customers so that you don't have to expose your personal cell phone number for the sake of staying in, in touch with, you know, with our customers and clients. So let's go pedal to the metal on this. All right. Let's make believe I am an executive working for a mid-sized company. Um, C-Suite has given me Aegis to work a couple days, three, four days, perhaps remotely from anywhere. It could be remote from my home. It could be from um, a Dunkin' Donuts out on 128 outside of Boston. <laughs> it could be, I, I jest, they're pretty noisy. It could be um, uh, a multi-purpose room in a library, or it could mm -hmm. be in a conference room. Okay. Why does being familiar with some of these resources matter to me and to my company to make my technology that I own, perhaps my iPhone or my Samsung uh, flip phone or anything like that? Why is it important that I remain seamless to the company's infrastructure through my phone? And how do these brands help me do that. So you want to remove friction points so that you can communicate with your clients mm -hmm. and you don't want to, you don't need to create more work for your customers uh, and for the people that are trying to connect with you. Right. These platforms can integrate within your business software stack, within your business um, solutions. Mm -hmm. So, so why use, you know, it's, we all have our personal cell phone number and I'll mm -hmm. tell you, we use this for personal use. We use this for business use every day. Right. You don't need to have a separate cell phone so that you can have a business telephone number on that. Right. For people that are using zoom, for example, zoom, I think it was one of the number one, you see free downloads for video meetings for the past mm -hmm. few years. Well, zoom has an application. Now it's an add on called zoom phone. Right. So now you can take your existing business telephone number, your extension, the way that people know how to get in touch with you. And you can associate that with a Zoom application, which can reside on your laptop, can also reside on your personal mobile device. And what that's doing is making it easier. Again, can you imagine receiving a phone call? Sorry. Can you imagine reaching out to someone you think you're calling their business telephone line and it forwards to someone's personal cell phone number. Right. And then it's, Hey, this is Mark. It's Friday. I'm busy. You know, hook up with me later. You know, like an unprofessional message. Right. And I'll tell you, people were doing that for a long time. They were just forwarding their business lines to their personal telephone lines. Not in, in my opinion, there's a much easier way to do that. You don't have to cross those paths. So using one of these UC applications that a lot of folks are already using for video, you can integrate that with, for voice and then use that within, you know, within your business. So it's your website has your business telephone number. Well, you can associate that with a Zoom phone license and now have that ability to 
communicate from the Dunkin' Donuts or from anywhere that you choose. Right. That's why these are important. Right. Um, and, and a couple points on this. One, um, I, what, what you talked about uh, associating your business number with Zoom, I, I do that for people that I reach out to um, so that the meeting ID actually comes up as my phone number, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, it looks like a phone number. It's not like the typical meeting ID on Zoom, which is like eight or nine digits. It's a, it's a 10 digit number and it, it looks like a phone number. So I think people get that. Right. The second point I wanted to make about some of these services, in particular, eight by eight, which I'm very familiar with because I use that as a carrier. Oh, for many years running my own recruitment business, I had, I had remote uh, people uh, all over the country. And so um, they could go through my switchboard number wherever they happen to be and have an extension number associated with them, even at the, even to their remote device, mm -hmm. uh, or they could have a direct dial number, which oftentimes became their direct dial business number. Right. And oh, by the way, phone numbers are portable. So that if you decide you don't want to use eight by eight anymore and go to another carrier, uh, there's a way to do that without losing the phone number, which is really great. We never mm -hmm. had that before 20 years ago. True. You had to get a new phone number and then new business cards, and it was it was messy. One other thing about 8x8 I just wanted to mention is that um, like 8x8, a lot of these UCs have uh, a program where they'll spiff you if you refer customers. I made a boatload of money. It's $100 <laughs> a line. It's $100 a line with, with 8x8. At least it was back in my day. I was making two dollars $3,000 a year referring people to 8x8. Wow. So. Not if you're bad, a, Dan. if you're a small business and you work with um, customers who can benefit from solutions like that, it's something to keep in mind. You know what, Dan? I'm gonna I, I, I gotta jump in here. I will spiff you one hundred dollars for every referral license that you bring our way. How's that? How about you? T you take me for coffee at the uh, at the Dunks and uh, one twenty eight. We'll settle on that. We can do that. But yeah, you know, there's um, th there's a lot of players within this service model mm -hmm. it's a tool it's a market that is growing the adoption mm -hmm. is widespread and for you smb business owners look into this um you you might have to put a little bit more effort than some of the medium to large businesses or enterprise because the folks that the folks that are selling these solutions yeah they're trying to go after those larger businesses first and i i really feel it's super affordable um, the SMB can can really benefit from these types of solutions. You can consolidate what you know your your platforms. There's more integration than just voice and video. But um, you know, if you're looking for someone to work with, don't wait for people to knock on the, on your door necessarily within the SMB. You might have to do a little bit of research. Of course, I'm Global Tech. We specialize in that, so yeah. you can come and contact us for that as well. Let's take a step back and speak to some of our listeners and viewers today who, you know, they may be corporate escapees and, <laughs> um, well, you know, they are, I mean, either they, either they, by choice or by uh, edict, yeah. they are no longer with the, uh, the big logo that they used to work for. And so many I'm hearing from are going into consulting type work, either as a partner with another company or perhaps running their own their own service business. A lot mm -hmm. of people, especially women, are doing that now into 2023 and 2024 um, as companies wrestle with RTO, return to office, or as my friend's, uh, friend Fran Saley and co-host on What's Your Work Fit in the Workplace would say, RTP, return to the past. Um, they want to go forward. And so if they are, let's say, setting up a business, they don't have to buy uh, necessarily a big uh, phone system. They have their phone and they can start with you by working with one of those universal carriers, right? It's pretty yeah, seamless. Yeah, it's, it's very seamless. You know, like you said, you don't have to change your number. So if you're, if you've started your business, you already have a telephone number that's associated with that. You don't have to, you, that's great. You don't have to change your business cards and your website and your marketing yeah. pieces. So you can easily move in 
to something like Zoom phone, Microsoft Teams, Ring Central, whatever it might be, seamlessly inexpensive. And like you were saying, you know, still keep that telephone number. Let's get into some of the uh, remote tech that you're especially interested in and are, and these are um, SKUs that you're currently offering at, uh, at uh, Global Tech Worldwide. Yeah. Um, let's start with the, the EPOS. Um, let me get the banner out of here. This, the, uh, the, the, this, this um, over the over the head um, headset device. Talk to me about this. Yeah, so I, I want to show you three quick devices here. So EPOS, mm -hmm. formerly known as Sennheiser, these are one of the leaders in the office and uh, call center market. So for mm -hmm. headsets, speaker phones, and, and cameras. This particular product um, it came out about two years ago, maybe 18 months ago. It's mm -hmm. a Bluetooth headset. It's inexpensive. Right. I think it's sub $150. I think I have one right here. This, I think everyone should have these um, for folks that spend a little bit of time on the phone. It's a casual, lightweight Bluetooth headset. Right. You know, it has a nice noise canceling microphone. It's easy to put on. You can connect it up to a, you know, any mobile device. Or if you have a Bluetooth dongle, you can pair these up to a, a PC or a laptop. And that's how you're going to unlock that UC application. Um, casual, ca casual, casual user, you know, sub $150. This, this is called the EPOS Adapt 230. All right. And it quickly became one of my favorite products because it's so lightweight and easy to throw on and easy to throw in my bag. I, I, let's take an aside here. Dave does actual product reviews. And I would imagine this is one of the ones you wrote about, right? Yeah, it is. Um, we do we do a lot of reviews, you know, but, you know, so, sometimes it's hard to explain the comfort level of a product. Right. You know, you can, you can do the noise, sorry, you can test noise canceling microphones in different environments and take a sample of that and kind of demonstrate that. Um, a lot of the commercial products, EPOS, Poly, Jabra. You know what? They all sound really good. These are these are not inexpensive consumer right. knockoff toys. So yeah, so we do a lot of the um, unboxing type videos and product demonstrations and comparisons. And what I thought was really cool about this one when it came out, the price point's very low. I have access to very expensive product, mm -hmm. but this one became my favorite. Even out of even at a low price point, this is like sixty bucks, right? Depends where you're buying it. No, it's a little bit higher than that because it is Bluetooth. It okay. is commercial as a, uh, I believe it's a one year warranty on it. Um, but no, that's more than sixty. It really depends on where you where you buy the product from. Okay, so let's let's move along. Um, wrap around two earphones. What's the benefit of that over one? Man, I, it's all about your work environment. This is for that Dunkin' Donuts work. You know, it has, this is a double ear headset. It's a little, um, a little more substantial in weight. The microphone on this is premium. It keeps, no, it's, it's all about keeping the noise from your background from going into the conversation. Quick shout out, uh, Scott Houston over at EPOS. He and I had a conversation last week. They're doing tests with um, with this headset and a chainsaw in the background. Oh my god! And really? What, and they're just what they're they're just trying to demonstrate how much audio this is going to block out from that conversation. Because hey, if if I'm a financial guy and I'm working with a client, I'm in a noisy environment, and I'm trying to extract some personal financial information from you, you might be a little reluctant to do that because it sounds like everybody's listening to our phone right. call. Uh, I want to relate to this because I live in an apartment community across mm -hmm. the street from the Iron Mountain, Northern Virginia data center. And that place is under perpetual construction. So what do I hear when I go outside to walk the dog? <laughs> I hear, I hear that the beep, beep, beep sound of dump oh, yeah. trucks turning around in our main roadway going into the community. And I've taken calls like that where I'm out with Bentley walking them, 
and I'm on my phone and people hear that and go, where are you? <laughs> right. Right. And that's very distressing, right? It can be, you know, I think a lot of people have, they've given us the permission to work in noisier environments. You know, I think four years ago, if they heard that, they might say, why aren't you sitting at your desk working, working? That's I am working. I'm just not sitting down at my desk. I'm with Bentley and we're going to, for a little jog right now. I want to, I want to get to something you mentioned. What's a dongle? That's a do- that word. That's a dongle. So this is something that's very important to this particular show because um, when you broadcast live on a video show like this, uh, the one thing you don't want to do is rely on your Wi-Fi, even if you've got uh, the 10G plus gateway from Xfinity, because something will disconnect it along the way and you'll get you'll get packet loss and buffering and all sorts of really horrible stuff. So having a dongle, and it's spelled D-O-N-G-E-L, I believe, is critical uh, for... G-L-E. Oh, G-L-E. G-L-E. Uh, G-L-E. Thank you, Professor. Um, <laughs> having this device enables you to connect with a, with a better connection uh, to the devices that are critical to your remote work environment. Yeah. So dongle and Wi-Fi, these are... A Bluetooth dongle is different than a Wi-Fi connection. Okay. Um, a lot of the headsets that many have started adopting since the pandemic, and I can tell you just from our own sales, have been Bluetooth, wi- Bluetooth-enabled devices. And that hasn't always been the case. There's a right. different type of wireless technology. I won't get into that. But right. Bluetooth has kind of become the, the standard here. There was, um, and I didn't jot her name down. So someone had asked about, the laptops. You know, yeah, let's get to let's get to that. Laptops. Helena so, Helena asked. She said, "I'm not really a gear person, but I will need to replace my Mac in a few months. So I will be interested to hear what Dave has to say about that." I, I just want to give an aside. You know, a lot of us uh, had perfectly fine working uh, Macs, and then we discovered that Apple wasn't updating the uh, the uh, Mac OS the way mm. that they used to be um, and not upgrading it to whatever the new platform was. So that forced me to go out and spend $2,500 on a new MacBook Pro. I'm happy with it, but sure. I, I think Helene is probably in the same position. So what do you have to say to her about that? So I wish I knew more about laptops in general and what's hot and what's good and what you know what's strong selling on the on the market but I, i'll tell you this that's not my expertise however with no laptops people are using these again for zoom meetings for phone calls mm-hmm. my macbook i have bluetooth built into it i'm sure a lot of the new laptops that come out there's bluetooth there's native bluetooth that's already right. built in our number one complaint that we receive from people are we 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 have this brand new expensive headset. I have a brand new expensive laptop and I pair them up Bluetooth and I'm not getting the audio that I'm expecting. Why right. is that? And it comes down to the Bluetooth chip in the laptop. It's really designed more for signaling. So it's for a, a wireless mouse or a wireless keyboard. All right. That's an important consideration. When you, when you get into these professional audio devices, mm-hmm. a USB Bluetooth dongle has the correct Bluetooth standards to support the full duplex audio that you would expect from a 150, 200, you know, up to three, 350 uh, professional wireless headsets. So the, the dongle is really the most, such an important piece of that puzzle to make it a good experience for you and the people that you're working with. I want to add to that because there's a, there's a practical application that um, applies to what's your work fit. And that is when I've had guests on who have had wireless headsets like that. Okay. And we've had drop off along the way. And I'm curious to know if maybe that was the reason why, as you said, the, the native or the embedded Bluetooth is for signaling. It's for connection, very basic. Whereas what you are describing, what you're showing is additionally for fidelity. And that's critical, especially yeah. coming creatives, creators and doing podcasts and video casts and the like. 
100%. Um, a lot of the uh, experience that our customers have when they use the native Bluetooth, mm -hmm. it will physically pair. They'll see it on their settings on their computer. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, I receive great audio. I can, I can listen to a podcast. I, I can hear great. My receive is great. But when I talk, it's cutting out. And that is that, that seems to be the case every time native Bluetooth is used from a from a laptop. Now you won't have that same experience when using a um, your your iPhone or your Android device, and that's because those Bluetooth chips, those manufacturers realize this mm -hmm. is not for a mouse or a keyboard. Right. Th that's for voice. But yeah, so that that certainly could be one of the issues. Um, there was also a question about wireless range with Bluetooth headsets. Um, yes, let's get into that. So where's James? James um, was asking about range on headsets. Now, I, this is a great question because I don't know James that well, but if he's like me, he can't sit still. <laughs> I, I, I am I am a kinetic type person when I'm uh, on a, well, I don't use a headset anymore. I've got Bluetooth connected hearing aids. But when I did, I was making lunch. I was uh, going into other rooms to grab things. And what I would often find is that I would, uh, the, 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 uh, the connection would vary depending upon what room I was in. Mm -hmm. So how can that be improved? <clears throat> this sounds so silly, but some, t so first off, Make sure that you're using a Bluetooth USB dongle. So step number one, this. Step number two is positioning. Mm -hmm. So wireless signals, you know, this is acting as a Bluetooth antenna. Right. And if I have this behind my computer with a plant in front of it, if it's obstructed, then that Bluetooth signal is not going to give me that, that range that I'm really looking for. Right. We've had people that have just taken the dongle and have, moved it from the left side to the right side of their computer. And it's made a huge difference. Interesting. Um, Global tech worldwide. We, we came out with a very basic device. It's a, it's a USB. It's a three foot USB to USB cable. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Mm -hmm. We sell it for like 30 bucks, but what it allows you to do. Uh, and I named this the, the blue, the blue beacon range extender. Oh, but what like it, it lets you do is take, um, take a dongle, connect it into a, this three foot long extension cable. Mm -hmm. And now you have the freedom of taking that and placing that the way an antenna should be. Right. Antennas shouldn't be laying sideways. Right. They, they should be going up. So with our range extender, you can put it at the top of your monitor. It goes up and then that will greatly improve the range i will tell you in the past few years with testing new products i sh i am shocked with how much range i am able to get on these bluetooth headsets i live in a medium-sized house three stories i can go from the top office where i'm at right now i can go down two stories into my laundry room crystal clear audio perfect that, see, I, I think that's really important because for, for many, the opportunity to venue the way they want to may mean, I mean, you live in, you live in suburban Boston and in, in New Hampshire. Yep. You're in a three-story home. You should be able to move freely through your space so that your work fit isn't corrupted in any way. This is true. Now, also remember this: if we're if you're using a, a headset and you have it connected into your laptop or your computer for mm -hmm. Zoom, yeah. If you have that Zoom or that Zoom phone application on your personal mobile device, mm -hmm. when you leave your office or leave your building, your Bluetooth headset it only needs to pair from here to here. Right. So your wireless range is as far as your pocket to your head and then wherever your network can bring you, you can have that work fit and stay connected. Yeah. From what I've heard about the new iPhone 15, the, um, um, the fidelity is a lot better now uh, with my, I have a 13 or a 12 and if it's in my pocket, 
that's that's problematic. I literally have to hold it kind really? of close up. So okay. so so they're thinking ahead in, in that in that way. I want to get to your third product here that that you are featuring. Um, and this one's interesting because some of our listeners and viewers are using uh, places that aren't their own homes mm -hmm. as work sites. Um, viewers of the show will know Amina Moreau. Amina is the founder of Radius and Radius for lack of a better description is sort of like the Airbnb of the workplace. So, yes. so let's say you're out in uh, Peterborough, New Hampshire, and you don't have any place to work, but you get through Radius and I'm just riffing here and you find this great home and it's got this huge dining room and you're going to be gathering some people in that dining room to work, but also to interact remotely with other people, perhaps in your agency or in, or in your mm -hmm. company. Tell me about this device and how it can work in a situation like I just described where that person's dining room by the night turns into a functioning conference room during the day. So listen, you can take your brand new $2,800 MacBook, put that in the middle of the table, open it up, and hope that the audio quality is great. It's not going to be great. The speakers and the microphones, even on the most expensive devices, is not awesome. Right. So a device like this, it's a phenomenal conference speakerphone. Um, you can put more than one of these together, but you can put it right in the middle of the table. Uh, professional audio, full duplex audio. You could do six people, you know, maybe a couple of more. If you had uh, a larger group, you can actually take a second speaker and do this wireless daisy chain yeah. to accommodate a larger a larger use. But I'll tell you, uh, a speakerphone, not everybody wants a headset. Right. Not everybody wants to put the device on their head, but they still need to sound great. What a phenomenal alternative. This is the... EPOS Expand 40, almost forgot. They, they have a whole new naming uh, yeah. nomenclature there. Expand, adapt, and impact. I love it. You know, I'll never get past Sennheiser. When I was in college, I had Sennheiser headphones. God, I love them. They were fantastic. Yeah, great, pro great, great company. Great company with a, with a legacy of really high-quality products. Let me ask you one question about this, Dave. If I had it on a, on a hard surface, mm -hmm. I mean, some people work in their kitchens, and they got granite countertops those are very echoey do i do i need to account for the hard reflective surfaces sound surfaces and put down something something to dampen it like a tablecloth that to make a, it work better you know what that's a great idea for a video dan i never really considered run with it before. brother run I with will it run with that i will absolutely run with that what i what i've learned about audio and when we started to mess with these devices about 12 years ago when it's on, it works great on a table on a hard surface. I haven't tried different types of materials there, but it, um, we have not had great experience if this sits on its own like stand. Right. If it's not on a table, if there's nothing around it, the audio from your voice, it, it needs to almost bounce off the table like a ping pong ball into the microphone. Th there have been some tests where this is standing alone. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't pick up the voice as good as it does when it is on a on a hard surface. But interesting, yeah. I'd like to try that on granite countertops, wood, something else, and kind of see how that would would react. Great idea for a video. The, the, the podcaster in me looks for sound dampening. Okay. Uh, so many of my colleagues, even ones that came out of broadcasting, uh, their their sound booth of preference is a walk-in closet with lots of winter coats hanging Fine, because yeah. it, ex it it absorbs a lot of ambient sound. But in this particular case, the reason why I'm asking is if you've got five, six, seven people around a table and they're trying to communicate with people who are distributed around the globe, um, how, how is that maximized? Hmm. So... I haven't considered that. That's a great question and a good idea for some tests. All right, we're going to have some fun here. So cool. we're, we're talking about the, the, the tech of today. And, um, you know, for those of you who thought we were going to be talking about iPhones, I, I apologize. I, uh, 
We'll try to address that at some future point. I think what Dave's doing here is so important, though, because um, it really uh, what what I like about your company, Dave, is that you are thinking very intentionally about the future of work and workplace, and and these tools that you have from the UCs to the the headsets that you've shown, the table speaker that you've shown, are really designed to make work seamless, make it effective, no matter where you are venued. So so good on you, brother, for that. But I, I want to have a little fun here and take us back to a, a different time, the tech of yesteryear. So without further ado, let's go back 123 years and forward to see what was hot back in 1900. Here we go. <laughs> How about that look through wow. tech pass, right? Flashback. What was that? The the portable computer was 30 pounds. <laughs> okay. So my my boss in Minnesota, the late Les Layton Jr., God bless him. He bought one of those things. He said, Dan, try it out. I, you know, Minnesota with icy streets and so forth. And I'm schlepping this thing. Good thing I wasn't living in DC at the time, taking it on the metro train with me. Yeah, it was 30 pounds. And it had a huge nine-inch amber monitor but you know what um it was for the time it was really cool right it didn't have a modem in the back that you would have to put a it had the slot for it so you'd have to take it to a tech it would probably cost you three hundred dollars that unit that that ibm pc portable sold for north of three thousand dollars in 1984 can you imagine so for, for $3,000, basically what you got was a keyboard, a CPU, and a monitor, all in one housing. And now the same amount of money gets you a fully, a fully loaded I, you know, <clears throat> uh, Apple MacBook Pro. No kidding. It's you know, amazing. My, my mother worked for digital in the 80s, and I remember her working from home one weekend, and she brought home... Her entire computer. Someone obviously helped her bring that into her car, but she brought home her work computer. <laughs> I want to get to Randy's. Uh, did we get to Randy's question about the tech? I think we did. Um, we uh, Tom's comment about remote work is a matter of will on the part of employers rather than how this will add weight to how much we choose remote tech. I think that's true to a certain degree. Um, uh, C suites are get are are going to have to be more amenable to allowing their best people to or their people really to to work in a way that doesn't tie them to the office five days a week. Yeah, you know, so forth and so on. So so really, the the work that you're doing, Dave, becomes really critical in that conversation. Wouldn't you agree? I would absolutely agree, and I'll tell you if it's a you know, within the C-suite, if your concern is about accountability, yeah, um, some of these solutions like these UC solutions, they can be integrated with your current systems. If you want to make sure that, you know, if you want to monitor phone calls or make sure that things are being tracked properly in a CRM system, all of these things can happen seamlessly without, again, without exposing personal mm -hmm. cell phone numbers, staying professional but also staying on task for measured results. So if you're not using some of these UC type solutions mm -hmm. and accountability is something that you're concerned about, look into it because it will, it, it can tie it all together. 
I want to get to to Randy's point here. Uh, uh, Randy's amazing. I, she's found all these resources to, you know, to to repair the technology that she has. And 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 on her recent move to Philadelphia, she said she found a quote unquote Mister Fix It to repair her tech. Um, and and this question piqued you, Dave. How, how do you find and vet a reputable tech repair service to keep the old stuff working? I think one of the reasons why I was interested to bring this question, you know, into the show was. There's people out there that sell technology. Mm -hmm. They There's people in, out there that sell and support technology. That's what global tech does. Mm -hmm. We're not just out selling SKUs for the sake of selling plastic and mm -hmm. who cares what happens to it after a year or two, you can go in a landfill. That's, that's not our, that's not the value add that we bring. We support everything that we sell. We know how to keep it up to date. I have I have clients today that have product that they bought from us five years ago that have contacted us. They're like, it's not working with my new Microsoft Teams. Why do I have to buy something else? Do I have yeah. to throw this away? Yeah. And they're happy to know that, you know what, the solutions that we sold to you five years ago, these are firmware based. We can get them up to date so we can, you know, we are the fix it guy. We can update them and configure it so that it's fully compatible with Microsoft Teams or any UC platform. So with, there's a lot of competition in this space, but we're the only people that provide lifetime support. You can call us. We know what it's all about. We do sell on Amazon. We have salespeople. We have our own uh, website, of course. Uh, regardless of where you buy the technology, if it's from Global Tech, you're going to get that, that local feel, that support when you need it. Because we also don't want it to just drop it out landfill, and we want you to maximize the investment that you made with us. Or, sorry, within the tech, we want to help maximize the investment that you made. That, um, oh, my 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 uh, friend Stuart Katz wrote I, for whatever reason he couldn't get on the on the feed. He said his wait, I got to read this. Oh, come on. Uh, he, he says his dongle collection has bailed him out countless times. He, I don't know if you can see this. He sent a picture of it. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. He literally takes a suitcase with him wherever he goes. Uh, we, we did a podcast in Chicago and that was, that was, that was his array. It was pretty amazing. Um, I, I'm going to get to my smart ass daughter's question. So Darren, Darren asks, what's the worst remote tech out there? Sweetheart. I think I have the answer to that. Here it is. Here, here it absolutely is. And it's from TikTok. And TikTok isn't leaving office attendance to chance. The social media platform is using something it calls my, T my RTO. It's software in the U.S. that monitors badge swipes and asks employees to explain their deviations from in-office schedules. Oh, come on, people. That's crazy. My RTO tool. That's not something that Dave is going to be willing to support in any form whatsoever. The last thing I would need to do is monitor my employees, TikTok or phone personal usage. You know what? We, we measure ourselves based on, did we get the job done? Are we meeting tasks? Are we hitting our deadlines? Right. And I'll tell you, if I was to do this to my people, they would, probably not be so happy with working that, that would affect the whole culture of the business. So that, that is the worst tech of the return to office. Return movement. to the past return to, well, listen, you're talking about TikTok. I think they understand authoritarian rule. True. So it's really not, it's really, you know, it might be effective in the, in the, in the short term and the long term uh, candidate retention, uh, Staff member retention goes retrograde. It's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, well, anyway, Dave, I so appreciate you being on the show today. Yeah, thanks, and Dan. We asked you about what's your work fit last time, and um, I'm going to paraphrase the answer that you gave me. What you said, and it was a really nice story. You talked about your son, who at the time was 17 years old, and on the day of the broadcast, you said, Dad – can we look at used cars? And you had identified some makes and models on Craigslist or whatever. And he, you and he agreed on a time to go out. And what you said to your kid was, you drive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be in the passenger seat. 
and I'm going to be doing product demonstrations of right. some of the tech that we sell <laughs> so that I understand in real life what it's like to be mobile and using these things. And I just wanted to congratulate you for that because I thought it was, one, I thought it was a great story, but I think it's so relatable to people who work in a way that they choose whereby they work when they need to and they're not tied to a clock and they're not tied to any specific venue. And I was wondering if you had anything you wanted to follow up with that um, reckoning. So we did purchase a car, not that day. Um, I I did actually make two videos, but the dad, while he drove, yeah. but the dad in me had to listen. When you're buying a used car, it's you're doing yourself a disservice if the radio's on. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not listening. Right. So I found myself that particular day, I did two quick videos because he was going to drive me around and I was going to, yeah he was going to shoot the videos of me. So we kind of flip flopped that, but um, that was a good day. I, I had to, I had to pay more attention to the car, but I was still available if customers did call me. So that was important. And um, you know, we made a car purchase uh, eventually used 21 year old car. Uh, we just had to dump some money into it, yeah, but yeah. Um, you know, so is, so is life and, and uh, old automobiles. But I had something that I want to tell you about my latest work fit, Dan. Go for it. Um, we use Ring Central in house. Mm -hmm. Ring Central, uh, the what what we've signed up for is we have like automatic call recording, voice transcription. Uh, there's some AI that's built into it. Mm -hmm. I had received a call from a a new client. And I was in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. I didn't have access to a pen and paper. Right. Um, I could have stopped and maybe made notes, but I, I remembered that my phone conversation is being recorded and I'm getting a transcription. So I was able to have the conversation. Um, at the end of the call, he said, all right, so will you send me a follow-up email? I said, yep. Yeah. I said, what's your email address? And it was one of these complicated, he was, he was in the military, so it was a complicated email address. Yeah. I had him say it. He said it nice and clear. I didn't have to write it down. Isn't that great? Didn't have to stop shopping. Um, I was back in my office within 15 or 20 minutes. Jumped into my Ring Central uh, interface on my PC. I pulled up the transcription, and there it was. And I didn't have to stop. Um, it was just perfect. It just worked out so well. So when you're using, you know, you one of the technologies from yesteryear, there was a dictation machine i think that you had put dictaphone. up the phone yeah the dictaphone. dictaphone you know all of that technology still exists it just exists in a better digital form so if you know i wouldn't have been able to do that if i was on my personal cell phone number i was still using my personal cell phone yeah but because it was all logged and recorded and transcribed already made it super easy and then i was able to work with uh someone on my team take that transcription, forward it over to her. And uh, she had everything that she needed because there was some other materials that had to get gathered. But I mean, that's work fit, man. Well, and I don't think enough can be said about what AI is going to do in that respect. Um, incidentally, I, cause you know, I couldn't help myself. I downloaded iOS 17 yesterday. Okay. And the really, th the really cool thing that it does is it's taken away the need to press a side button to engage Siri. You know how you engage Siri now? You say the word Siri and that little circle thing pops up mm -hmm. and then you can start executing. Now, where that's really great is in the car because oh, I'm, sure. I'm connected in the car and I've got an idea uh, and I don't want to lose it because by the time I get home, I'm going to forget it. So Siri and then whatever the task is, you know, See, Siri just opened up on my phone right now and she's saying, what do you want yeah. me to do? <laughs> Never mind, Siri. Um, you need to unlock your iPhone first. Yeah, really? I know. You hear that? I did. <laughs> the, 
Dave, this has been great. Um, thank you so much for being back on What's Your Work Fit? We, and, and as we said the first time, we look forward to many, many more. Um, I wish you and your company the greatest of success. And I, I truly appreciate all you are doing to help people like our viewers and listeners create a more meaningful work fit around technology. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me on. Listen, Dan, you're having an awesome year. I continue to follow you. The best of luck and um, keep working out fit. Thank you so much.